Technology on campus at UCSD. And today, I would like to talk a little bit about the concept of intuitive designs in immersive virtual reality environment. And I'm standing right in the center of the running facilities that have been named as Star Cave. The Star Cave is a very cool name. And some of you guys may ask a question. Does Star Cave bear any relationship with the Star Walls? Well, my answer is probably not. But there is one thing that I make sure that is when you are going to excel in such an immersive learning environment with 360 degrees surrounding images, you're going to definitely get the same feelings as you did in Star Wars itself. Alright, let's quickly check with the hardware devices real quick. And behind those runner walls, the runner clusters of Star Cave is composed of 17 Dell XPS desktops installed with the Central OS Linux operating systems. And for each of the desktop, it is equipped with an NVIDIA Quadro 5600 graphics card and connected to two projectors. And for each set of the two projectors, they're generating standardized images with different directions of organizations, which can be captured and filtered by the 3D glasses that we carry on right now. And to watch these standardized images, it works pretty much in the same way as we did in watching the avatars in 3D IMAX theaters. And each of the projector is with the resolutions of 1096 by 2048, which is four times as higher as the HD TV available in the market right now. And also we can notice that on top of these facilities, there are four sets of ultra and cameras that takes the images of those ultra reflective boards equipped not only on top of the head trackers, but also in these three mouses as well. And there is another set of Windows machines that takes the task of the image processing and constantly take the images of both sides and figures out which directions the viewers are looking at and which direction the pointer is pointing to. And this is basically the hardware device that we use for the running environment. And also I would like to give some comments about software that we use in this virtual reality environment. Uh, it's based on OpenGL. However, I'm not directly using OpenGL option calls in my codes, because uh, most of the plugins developed within this environment was directly based on a third-party library called Cobice. And Cobice is provided by a research institute located in Germany, and it was originally developed in Windows environment. And the start here just copied codes, uh, transfer the codes from the Windows environments into the Linux platform and got them recompiled. And the Cobis is sitting right on top of OpenSync uh, which is another encapsulation of OpenGL function calls. And the next thing that, we, that I'm going to do is load my application called KTag, which is used by architecture designers to quickly test out their models and designs in world scale, in world scale within this environment. And this project has been sponsored by the company of HMC Architects uh, since 2009 and has been developed in the second version. The KPAD project is developed in much the same way as Google SketchUp does. The, the difference is that this project has been developed into a pure 3D immersive and intuitive environment. Now our objective is to get rid of the handling manuals and buttons as much as possible and build up the models within the fast and intuitive way within this virtual reality environment. All right, let's step into the project and check the some of the features within the next 10 minutes. Here we'll see the construction plugins showing as a reference on the viewer's size. The construction function is right located on the front surface of the cube. Let's get started with a simple box by picking it up from the cube. The box is created with an easy snapping that indicates the two endpoints of its diagonal. The cube supports geometry at both group level and surface level. We could easily change dimensions of created geometry by choosing and dragging a specific surface, or we could choose to create an opening right on top of it and push it in. Through group level editing, the whole structure could be simply turned around given axis positions, translated towards the specific directions, or just scaled. The clone function creates these duplicate instances pretty fast. 
just by dragging them to new positions they like to place. The color and texture tool is on the back surface of the cube, where CaveCat users provides a list of textures to the cube configuration file. And these colors and textures will be showing up and used in both group level and the surface level editing during runtime of the program, with just a simple clicks. The XML path of the cube configuration file not only reads in the list of texture options, but also generates the control user interface, such like buttons of a previous and next page. This short clip shows the frequently used redo undo function that attached to every building action. An operation stack is implemented that takes record of every historical step in the past. Previous construction states could get recovered or preceded by clicking on these two buttons. And we also have viewport based path recorder, through which users could take still snapshots from several viewports, and the system will interpret them into keyframe animations and provide a guided tour connecting those points. For virtual reality, here comes the question from real world. Can we use this application in modern design? The answer is yes. And I'm with great pleasure to present the building example of a Barcelona pavilion with the actual site plan and floor plan loaded on top of the construction plane and the panorama showing in distance. We are right about to place ourselves in the center of the construction site. This building stands importantly in the modern history of architectural designing and is well known for its elegant simple form and extravagant materials. Starting from piling up columns and choosing between marbles and travertines, the whole building process is finished within two hours with every corner polished with precise dimensions. Oh, trust me, I'm not floating building on water surface on purpose. I know this is in Barcelona, not in Venice, but this is just an example of testing our shader programs. Real-time shadows are generated with respect to geographical inputs, such like latitude and longitude, time of the day and time of the year. So the designers could carefully examine the cast shadow patterns at every moment, which is also important in modern design. You know what? Maybe that's part of the reason why Sock Institute in La Jolla is just so famous for its sunset views. These geographical parameters are passed into shader pipeline, so they could be converted to OpenGL lighting coordinates and directly applied to small pieces of GPU codes that are used in the rendering of reflected water surface, illuminated sky, and Milky Way at night. There is a good chance that our clients are not satisfied with the pre-finished models, and we will take it as a valuable experience to make some in-time modifications within the construction site. Requests from the customers may sound like, what's going to happen if we move the ceiling blocks further into the other side? Will you please lower down the wall in the distance so you can get a better view of the city? Or can I put it all the way back to the midpoint of the corridor and push it lower to the ground? The other option that we have in world-scale 3D spaces is that the construction cube can be just placed anywhere around us to leave it to the front of the doorway or bring it up to the top of the roof. It's all up to your preferences and choices. And that's about to be the end of the short Barcelona experience, but the software development is far more from being finished. It has been very clear to us that the objective is not to make advanced geometry editors that take several weeks to learn how to use, but to make it as intuitive as possible, so everyone without any training in 3D Max could draw their blueprints without the pains. And this is the motivation that calls for the development of the second version of the CaveCAD without cubes. Here is some highlights of the new features. The user interface is totally free of buttons and handling menus. Designers are free to change floor plans by dragging it directly to the ground. And it is the same story for panoramas. Let's give it a try on Yosemite National Park. You're gonna take a few seconds to load the texture to shading memories. And all pixels on water surface are rendered as a composition of reflected mountains, refracted pebbles in the water, sky colors, and sunlight. A yellow joystick is on top of the one is used to switch between different options and between different toolkits as well.
Here is the virtual widget that is used to set the geographical inputs. The pinpointing on top of it shows my current locations in the world. Alright, let's try to move it from San Diego to somewhere else. And notice that the sunlight directions and colors are going to change accordingly. There are other substates that adapt to the time of the day. In fact, we could grab it and rotate it with our own forces in this virtual world, as if we are playing with a global model. Wondering why the model is tilted with a certain degree, it's all based on the fact that there is 23.5 degrees tilt from the equator plane to the elliptical plane. And time of the year can be changed on these seasonal maps with images taken from the same tree year and around. All geometries that you're going to create are shaped within a container. The construction is accomplished with just one snapping. There will be a reference plane with these blue grids shown right in front of the intersection point, and the precision levels can be adapted for blocks with different sizes. At the time of creation, the container turns out to be an indicator with wireframes and dimensions on it right in front of the viewer. The texturing tools come to like a random blowing up, but in fact, their positions are decided by the viewer's options. As the final part of this short demo, I would like to introduce the new geometry editing system. When a piece of a geometry is selected, several icons will show up around it, indicating the ways of the modifications, arrows for translations, rulers for rotations, and control points for scalings. Offset steps are also adaptive, as in different levels of precision. Or you could choose to edit all the few surfaces on it by clicking on the geometry indicator. Offset values and the current levels of precision will be displayed right on top. Well, my friend, this is about to be the end of the CapeCAD demonstration. I do appreciate your time and concern, and the project will be moving forward with future progresses. Although it has not been commercialized yet, StarCave is open to all types of commercial investments and academic sponsorship and all kinds of potential partnerships are also welcomed. Thanks very much for your time.